What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Dev Tactic Dev Vlog. My name is Simon if you don't know me and today we want to talk about a topic that I think mentioned like in basically every episode and it is side projects. Yay! You asked about how I approach uh, side projects from start to finish and because I'm currently in the process of releasing my next project pretty soon hopefully I wanted to share with you all the steps that you can take from the beginning to the end to come up with your own project. So when my smoothie is finished, it's go time. So as a good developer, I think it's basically your duty to work on some projects that come from internal motivation from time to time. Through these projects, you can learn a lot of new things, you can get into new technologies, you can solve real problems, um, you get a lot of experience and in general, you just become a better developer uh, in many areas. Because I got already 10 tabs open that I wanna show you and talk about, I think we should start. So for me, all side projects start either with an idea for something that I think might be interesting for people or with a real problem. For the first case, you should actually validate your idea upfront, something I'm not very good at. But for the second part, which is uh, having a problem, a pain that you want to solve, I, in general, just get started because I know that whatever I will develop, it will be at least helpful for me. And in this case, I also hope that it will be helpful for other developers. So for me, the problem was I recently created a new app, a small tool for Instagram. And once it comes to the submission, you have to supply these images for iOS, as you can see in multiple categories. So the 6.5 display, the 5.5 display, if you do it for the iPad also into more uh, views. And if you inspect the real media manager, you see there are even a lot more um, screen sizes that you could supply and creating like great assets for this is really a process that's complicated. So what I wanted to do was I just want to capture the screenshot on my simulator or device then upload it somewhere and apply like a background image or a color some text and format the screenshot in the right device Stuff like this just takes time, especially if you do it for multiple devices. As you can see, for Android, it's the same. You have to supply the phone, then you get also feature graphic and stuff like this. So I wanted to create a tool for this. That was the problem I wanted to fix. In the beginning, what I always do is um, come up with an internal name, like SAT was the name in my case. And then I just got started because I knew I needed a back end to do some image transformation and then I will need the front end editor. So for the back end, I just try to implement something I call my own proof of concept or POC. That's basically to show yourself that the problem you want to tackle can actually be solved. So I did this and this took some time, but I figured out how to do it in a cool way. And then I was confident moving forward. So once you got your basic problem or idea and then created a first working super small proof of concept, it is time to think a bit broader about how you want to market this, um, how you want to sell it. So all the general stuff around this. I know creating the code and writing all the stuff is way more interesting, but if you want to build this out into something that people really use and perhaps even pay you for, uh, the time is worth to think about what you want to achieve with the project. Once you get your solution and think it's time to move on, I already start to look for a uh, domain name because you don't want to have like this name that you used internally in all of your applications. Um, I just want to know how I want to call it in the end. So I settle on the name and then you need to get the domain. In my case, uh, you can use Namecheap. I use the German provider. That's really completely up to you. The only thing you need to make sure is that you can get into the DNS settings because later on what you want to do is, for example, connect a service like Mailgun. Mailgun allows you to send emails from your Node.js or whatever server um, using the service and in order to uh, use a verified email, you have to apply some settings to uh, your DNS settings. Also, what I use is Firebase and for Firebase, in order to get your domain connected to the Firebase hosting, you also need to supply some information in here. 
So this isn't really tricky. There's always a little introduction on how this works and where you should input the data. So don't fear the DNS configuration. This is really mandatory if you want to get your app out at some point. Now, if you get a team of developers from now on, the process is a bit different because I'm a solely indie developer. Um, I basically do all the work myself. For me, I always start with the API part and then I create the front end. It doesn't make any sense in the opposite way because if I have the front end and no back end, I have, there's nothing I can work with. So I just create the API and then I get started with the front end and sometimes I move back to the uh, API because there are things I notice from the front end side that should be changed on the back end. If you are a team just of two or multiple developers, you can also start at the same time, one working on the API and the other on the front end. You just need to talk about like the interfaces, the routes, uh, how you're gonna name the domains and all of this stuff. Of course it works faster as a team, but this is also possible just as a solo developer. All right, so then you got the problem, you got the domain, and then I also start to create a Git repository. Um, I used to use Bitbucket simply because they had private repositories before GitHub had them. So in my case, I simply create two new repositories, one for the API, one for the app. I connect everything to my projects and then I can simply commit on this machine. Then I can go down and work on my MacBook and simply pull everything that I pushed. <laughs> Especially when working with a team, make sure to set up the Git repositories right in the beginning. Really, that's very important. What follows then is, of course, one of the most interesting parts. So creating a proof of concept is really exciting and then you move on to the real solution. So in my case, I picked the Nest framework. Uh, you've seen this in one of my latest vlogs as well. I really enjoyed using it to create my API. What I also use for my API is MongoDB in most cases, simply because um, I really like to use Heroku as a hosting for my Node.js applications. And with Heroku, you can uh, simply create your application and then within the resources, you can super easily collect um, or quickly add an add-on like you can see here. You just select it. Um, you can change basically at any time the plan you're on. Uh, moving on to a paid process, uh, paid plugin, whatever name it is. So I really enjoy using the combination of Node.js and MongoDB. In terms of further services, I already mentioned I use Mailgun to send my mails. Um, I know how this works. There are other like SendGrid, but I was happy and confident with Mailgun all the time. And also, if you are working with payments, I highly recommend that you use Stripe. Um, they have a great API, they have uh, webhooks. In general, the integration here is really great. PayPal integration isn't that easy, so Stripe works perfectly fine for credit cards. And the webhooks I mentioned are basically like events. So the user pays on your front end, whatever, sends some stuff to Stripe, and the payment just takes some time. But at some point, the payment succeeds or fails, and then Stripe will send out a webhook to a predefined URL. So this is an ng-rock URL, uh, which is like routing forward to my local environment. But in general, you could now supply the Heroku hosting URL here, and then Stripe will let your server know at some point that the payment was successful. You just need to connect this to the order and do all the rest of the stuff, of course. Then I've wrapped up my API implementation and I got started with the front end. Because I plan to have this just as a web version available, I simply picked Angular as a front end. And I know with Firebase, I can host my applications. I already said this. You can actually connect your domains like I did with the Ionic Jobs domain. Um, I don't know, if you go into this, uh, let's just say test.com, uh, you get to a point where you have to verify your ownership, where you have to copy a little text file here to the DNS settings uh, where you purchased your domain. At that point, your uh, domain is connected, your server is set up, so you got the front end deployed to Firebase Hosting, you got the back end deployed to Heroku connected with the Mongo Lab. Um, then you just need to make sure everything works together. Right now, I'm actually at this last part. Um, I need to add some legal text. I need to implement the home page or the landing page and just the general UI. And that's actually the most boring part of a side project. Boring. 
but it is mandatory as well if you want to get paying customers for your product and of course then I have to deploy everything I have to test it in the real environment so there's still a lot of work involved but these are in general the steps I take from the beginning from idea or problem to the final deployment or hosting of the application. Another cool thing is that actually most of the tools I use and present are free. Um, so with Heroku um, you just have to pay once it gets to a real version that you want to create and get out and uh, be live for 24 hours a day. Uh, with the other services, Mailgun is free, Stripe is basically free, Firebase hosting is free. For the domain, of course, you have to pay, but you can get started and get your side project out for like 10, 15 bucks or 20 bucks, so and that's a great price. So these were like the basic steps I take for side projects. Let me know if you want to know more about a certain step of them or if you in general want further information on a different topic like marketing, pricing, idea validation. There are really a lot of topics we could go into the deep. There are really a lot of topics we could talk more deeply about, but of course this format is a bit limited and I don't want to waste your time. I just want to give you the most concise information for you as a software developer to enjoy what you do, build great products and eventually get paid for them. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more great dev vlogs and of course the Ionic tutorials which come out also every Tuesday. Anyway, I really enjoyed this episode. I hope you noticed because side projects are one of my favorite topics. Now enjoy the rest of your week, the weekend and the next week. Go out, build some cool side project. Let me know if you recently released something. I would love to see it. And then of course, have a great week as always and happy coding, Simon.